Welcome back to DIY Boomers. Today we're going to talk about the steps we take in the early fall to maintain a fuller and healthier lawn. To prepare for aerating, overseeding, and top dressing, you need to first mow your lawn at the lowest height that doesn't harm your lawn. This is to allow seeds and top dressing to settle before having to mow again. On a side note, to avoid clumping of grass whenever it's long or very thick, we use a short bungee cord to hold the discharge chute up about 6 inches or so to allow the clippings to spread further out over the lawn. We also use mulching blades. In the fall, it's always a good idea to aerate your lawn. Aeration relieves the compaction and allows air, water, and nutrients to reach the root zone and new seeds when overseeding. That was a challenge this year in the Midwest with the lack of rain over the summer. We did get a timely moderate rain so that we did give it a shot. The resulting plugs are about half the length that they normally are, but even that was better than nothing. Overseeding doesn't necessarily need to be done every year. If your lawn is relatively thick and free of damage, every two to four years is probably good. Our yard is in pretty good shape, so we limited overseeding to just the front yard and a few spots on the sides and the back. The top dressing that we prefer is compost that's delivered in bulk from a local supplier. Compost amends the soil with organic nutrients that feed your lawn and also serves to hold moisture for germinating your overseeding. Like overseeding, composting doesn't necessarily need to be done every year. We generally combine it with overseeding every couple years or so, whenever the lawn appears to need it. This year, we broke down and bought a Lanzi compost and peat moss spreader. Two years ago, we struggled with spreading the compost manually with shovels. Never again. The Lanzi spreader comes in four sizes, a 24, 36, 44, and a 60 inch. The 24 inch model is a walk behind with no mower hitch on the handle. Three larger sizes have walk behind handles that can be unpinned from the mower hitch for towing with a mower. Also the three larger models have bolt on handles where the 24 inch model has a convenient spring pin snap on handle that requires no tools. However, the bolt-on models do come with a box-end speed wrench and an open-end wrench for assembly. One thing that we really like about this Lanzi spreader is that the door latch clips are spring-actuated so they don't come unlatched during use. That's a really good feature. We thought we'd get the 36-inch model so that we could use it with or without the mower, thinking that we wouldn't use it with the mower in tight spots. We changed our minds after straining a bit with it in the front yard. Keep in mind that we were using compost, which is a lot heavier than peat moss. For those of you that need to use a walk behind, I would recommend using the 24 inch unit for spreading compost. If you're spreading peat moss, however, I've seen videos where folks are walking with the bigger models and that seemed to work okay. So we broke out our John Deere S130 and made it a whole lot easier with the 36 inch spreader. We had always intended on using the tractor in the backyard, being that it's much larger than the front. We also got the tractor cart out to make hauling the compost to the back easier. I was actually surprised how well the spreader maneuvered behind the tractor in a tight turnaround. It actually worked out very well. So overall, we're very pleased with how the Lansy spreader made the composting job so much easier. We definitely recommend it to anyone looking to top dress their lawn with compost or peat moss. It's seven days later now and we can see seedlings sprouting up, especially in the thinner areas that we were concentrating on. Work is not complete, however, with just laying the seed down. The seeds need moisture for germinating and early growth. We were fortunate to get a substantial rain four days after seeding, but we watered right after seeding and up until the big rain to get things started. Now, a couple days after the rain, we'll start watering again so that the seedlings don't dry out. You don't have to soak the lawn when you water, the seedlings just need to stay moist. 
So we hope you found the video helpful. Don't forget to give it a like and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to check out the rest of our content here on our DIY Boomers channel. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.